Thanks everyone for coming. Kikat, you can go back behind the board. She's just uh, hanging out behind the whiteboard, making sure I don't make any mistakes today. Every resource you'll find that teaches Korean will have a lesson about sentence structure, but each resource will go into it at a different depth. We'll start with the most basic, S-O-B. What this means is subject, object, verb. This is the most basic organization of a Korean sentence. If you just know this, you can't make a Korean sentence unless it's really short. So a subject will be something that does something or something that you're talking about. Like if you wanted to say, I like Korea, then I is the subject. But if you wanted to talk about something else, like that monkey is pretty. The monkey is the subject. The monkey is what you're describing. So monkey would be the subject in that case. A object is something that a verb, a verb is just to do, to eat, to go, to swim, to study, to sleep, to wonder, to worry, to think. All of those to do things are verbs. Anything that those verbs can affect, for example, to swim. Can you swim something? No, but you can eat pizza, you can eat kimchi, you can drink water, you can study Korean. So all of those things that you can affect with a verb, you can close a window or open a window or open a door. All of those things, the door, window, pizza, kimchi, those would be an object. So if you wanted to say, I like Korea, well, what are you liking? To like is the verb, so you like Korea. And then at the end is the verb. So like 저는, which is I, 한국, Korea, and then 을, which is the object marker. We're not going to be talking about these in depth. We're just talking about overall sentence structure today. 좋아해요. Sentence structure is how sentences in Korean are arranged, how they're organized. For a simple sentence, I Korea like, after, you know, just a few minutes of practice, every beginner can organize the sentence correctly. But that's not how people speak, is it? For example, this sentence, that's not how people speak, is it? How would you organize that using this? Doesn't really make sense. That's not how people speak. What's the subject? Real situations don't usually fall into this simple rule. So people quickly get lost. They said, oh, how do I translate that? How do I even start to translate that? It wouldn't fit in there. There's other particles besides subject, object, and verb that make up a sentence. Let me give you another sentence. I like cheese. How would we organize this in Korean? One of these is a subject, one of them is, is an object, and the other one is a verb. Or you can change it to something else if you like, you know, I like BTS, okay? I'm just gonna do this because I know a lot of people are fans of BTS. I only know one of their songs, okay? I'm catering to you guys right now. I'm hip, I'm cool. Subject is what is doing an action. So what is doing something in the sentence? Or what are we directly talking about? Well, that's I. What is the object? The object is something that a verb is doing something to. So here we have the verb to like, and to like, what are we? liking? Well, we are liking BTS. Subject, object, verb in Korean becomes I, BTS, like. The next thing we're going to add into this mix is markers. And we have the object marker, which like I said, marks an object. We have the subject marker, E or Ga, and then we have the topic marker, un or nen. The subject marker shouldn't be confused with the SOV thing I told you about. This doesn't mean subject marker. This just means the subject of the sentence. So the subject of the sentence could have an object marker on it. It could have a topic marker on it, or it could have a subject marker on it. It's just the main thing, the main part of the sentence that's doing something or being described. Don't think that because it's subject object marker that you have to put the subject marker on every sentence in Korean, or you have to mark everything that's doing something with the subject marker. That's not true. It just happens to share the same name. And these markers are only to be used specifically after a noun. You know, in English, we say a noun is a person, place, or thing. If you've never seen these before, I would recommend searching for Korean markers, Korean object marker, subject marker, topic marker. And there's many videos online that will give basic explanations of them. The other thing I wanted to say about markers is that I see a lot of people remove the markers and don't use them because when you learn these, often when you're taught these markers, people will say, but it's optional. For example, I eat cheese, okay? I is the subject, cheese is the object, and mogoyo is the verb. But I've seen a lot of books that will teach about the object marker. Here, le, this marks the object, the object is cheese. But I'll see them say, oh, you know, it's actually optional. And they're correct, because you can just say, chonen cheese mogoyo. It's perfect. In fact, maybe even more natural than saying cheese or mogoyo. But the problem with that is your sentence can get vague. I would say, don't remove any of these markers until you know better. I mean, until you know that my advice is wrong, I would say never remove those until you know better than this advice. It'll actually help you to better understand these markers if you keep using them. For a quick review again, markers go after a noun and not after or before anything else. You wouldn't see nun, cho, 
for like me, it always goes after the noun. So it would always be 저는 or 저를 or 제가, something like that. Adverbs will always come before the verb, 먹다, to eat. So if you wanted to say to eat quickly, 빨리 먹다. In English, we would say to eat quickly. In Korean, they don't say 먹다 빨리. What if we wanted to say I eat very quickly? We already have here an adverb before the verb. If we want to add another adverb, this part works exactly the same as in English. Very quickly. 아주, very, 빨리, quickly, 먹어요. I very quickly eat. Another adverb would be 많이. 저는 많이 먹어요. I eat a lot. 많이 means a lot, but we could also do other things here. So what if we wanted to say, I eat a lot more than him. This more than him part would also be used as if it was an adverb. In Korean, you would use it in reverse. So if you wanted to say more than him, less than him, just like that. Anything else that helps describe how you're doing that verb in any way would also be used like an adverb before the verb. So I'm not going to be teaching this grammar form, but this is normally a separate grammar form. So if you don't know this, don't worry about it. 저는 그 사람보다 많이 먹어요. I eat a lot more than this person. So now we have two adverbs that are describing how we eat. So 저는 먹어요. I eat. 저는 많이 먹어요. I eat a lot. 저는 그 사람보다 많이 먹어요. So I eat a lot more than that person. Prepositions in English. When I was in elementary school, the teacher described it as a preposition is anything that an airplane can do to a cloud. So the airplane can go in the cloud. The airplane can be on top of the cloud. It can be under the cloud. It can be next to the cloud, right? It can go through the cloud. All of these things in English are prepositions. <laughs> so in Korean, we might have something like an, inside, pak, outside, or we have yop, next to, or we have we, on top. In English, we say preposition, you know, preposition, because it comes before. So we say on the table. In Korean, these are called post positions. Pre means before and post means after. In Korean, they come after the noun. So if you wanted to say inside of the desk, you would say desk inside. Outside the house, you would say house outside. Next to me, you would say me next. On top of the car, you'd say car top. But you don't have to learn this word post positions. It's just a fancy grammar term. All you have to do is know that these types of words also have rules for how they are used in a sentence. First of all, I ate the cheese on the table. So in Korean, like I said, post positions here, we on top of come after the noun. So we have table on top of. Innen just means exists. We'll talk about this more next time, so don't worry about this part. But the cheese that exists on top of the table, then we could say there. I ate the cheese that is on top of the table. I want to give one more example sentence here. 저는 침대 밑에서 잤어요. I slept under the bed. How did I sleep? Specifically, I slept under the bed. So you can think of this whole section here, under the bed, describing how we slept. So of course, this should go directly before the verb, although this isn't an adverb. In the same way, it is something that is affecting how we're doing the verb. Adverbs will go directly before the noun. So we have I eat cheese, right? So what if we wanted to say, I eat delicious cheese? All we do is we put the word delicious directly before the noun. In this case, mashita is the word for to be delicious. So we have chonen, mashinen, delicious. I eat delicious cheese. Adjectives only go before the noun. You cannot finish a sentence with an adjective that's not directly being used to describe a noun. <laughs> so some people might write, 이것이 맛있는 이에요. And this makes absolutely no sense. I'm not laughing at you if you do that. I'm warning you, do not do this. This is already conjugated to be used as an adjective. If you did not conjugate this, it would be a descriptive verb. And the original descriptive verb, 맛있다, notice it has a 다 at the end. That means it's the original dictionary form. So if you want to use this as an adjective, then you would conjugate it to 맛있는. 맛있는 is now an adjective. It's been conjugated as an adjective. Because of that, this has to be used as an adjective, which is before a noun. This cannot be stuck before a verb. She smiled. Uh, let's say her name is uh, Susie, right? Susie smiled. Susie ga so you wanted to say Susie smiled pretty, right? Oh, her smile was pretty. She smiled pretty. So people might just say, oh, yepun. And it would be completely wrong here because like I said, yepun is an adjective and it cannot be used like an adverb. You'd have to make it an adverb to use it as an adverb. So depending on how every word is being used, it might have to be completely differently conjugated. So in this case, you could say yepuge, prettily, pretty, and this is an adverb. So yepuge is an adverb and only an adverb. So you couldn't again say, 예쁘게 
viso, pretty smile, that makes no sense. It has to be conjugated according to how it's being used. And if you're thinking, Billy, why are you stressing this so much? Like, I got it. Well, yeah, a lot of people don't got it because I see this type of mistake used all the time. People don't realize that they're making this mistake because they're not thinking about how the word is being used. So, I like nice people. How would we organize this sentence in Korean? This would be I is the subject, like is the verb, nice is an adjective, and people is object. So, I, nice people, like. 친절하다 is the word for one of the ways to say to be nice. There's a few. 친절한 now is an adjective. It has to come before a noun. So 저는 친절한 사람들, people, or 사람들만 only 좋아해요. I like only nice people. 저는 동영상을 봤어요. I saw a video, right? What kind of video did you watch? I watched a two hour long video. So we have 두 시간 means two hour. 짜리 is something that's worth or something that's long. This would be a separate lesson I could do. The adjective here is two hour long. It's not using a descriptive verb. It just means a video that is something that is two hours long. I watched a two hour, two hour long video. Locations. So you might want to say something like, I want to study at home. In English, we typically say the location at the end of a sentence. In Korean, they will put it toward the verb. It'll be right before the verb or at the start of a sentence. This doesn't mean directly before the verb, the adverb will go there. If you want to say eating quickly at home, the at home part will come before that eating quickly part. Anything that's describing the verb will go after the location. If you want to emphasize the location, like I want to study at home, not at school, you put it toward the very beginning of the sentence. Number one thing is just before the verb. If you want to emphasize it though, stick it toward the beginning of the sentence. So if you were to say the sentence, I want to study at home, 저는 공부하다, to study, which becomes 공부하고 싶어요, or any other way you want to conjugate it. Now, if we wanted to put an object here, so we can say, I want to study Korean, 한국어, right? 저는 한국어를 공부하고 싶어요. So we want to study at home. That comes before the verb. 집에서, at home. If you look on my channel, there's a video about how to use a and eso that explains this in detail. 저는 집에서 공부하고 싶어요. I want to study at home. I want to study art at home. Let's use art. Art is 미술. 저는 집에서 미술을 공부하고 싶어요. I want to study. What do I want to study? Art. That's why I'm saying before the verb, but not directly before the verb. What comes directly before the verb would be the adverb. What comes before the adverb or before that whole verb, what are you doing and how are you doing it? Before that would be the object, what's being affected. We can even take this a step further. I want to study art at my house slowly. So we could say 천천히 공부하고 싶어요. So I already taught about, you know, just where to put markers. They go directly after a noun. But sometimes you might want to use more than one marker in a sentence. You know, all of these things like this, there are some times when you might combine one or more of these two together. For example, you might say, I gave the present to Chosu. What if you wanted to say, I gave it to Chosu also? Well, normally if you said also, you would use Chodo, I also. But no, you want to say you gave it to Chosu and you gave it to your friend Sarah. You would say, A gay. Do. You would not say 철수 도에게. 철수 도에게 would be wrong. What I'm trying to say is there's a specific order that you can put these sort of markers together. And unfortunately, you have to memorize every single possible combination. To give you a quick um, overview of how you can and can't do that, the simplest way to do this is don't. Use only one marker in your sentences unless you know otherwise. Instead, if you wanted to say, I gave it to Chosu too, but you don't remember, is it ege to or just to? It's just ege. I gave it to him. Don't try to stick in another particle unless you're sure that it's going to grammatically make sense. If you want to combine topic marker with another particle, it would go after that other particle. But it doesn't mean you can use this with every particle. You cannot combine un with to, but you can combine it with most of the other ones. You also cannot combine this with the subject marker or the object marker. With man, it becomes man -un. With this one, it would become ege nen or ege sol nen. With ante, it's also ante or ante sol nen. With e sol, it's also e nen or e sol nen. These are just specifically four cases when you can combine this topic marker with another particle. So let's talk about how can do combine. Do cannot combine with any of these, but you can have e ke or e ge sol do or ante or e do or e sol do. Man would be used after as well. E ge or e ge sol man. Same thing for ante. E man. Eso man, but this one can also be used with the subject marker mani, manen, and man 
time, when something happened. There's two places to put this. You'll either use this in the very beginning of a sentence or after the subject. I went to the library yesterday. The time will go at the very beginning of the sentence or right after the subject, which means you'll either put the time here after the subject or right here at the beginning of the sentence. Oje for I, Tosoguan. Tosoguan means library. E to Kasoyo. I went to the library yesterday. Or, 저는 어제 도서관에 갔어요. Sometimes things are moved around and there's a use for that, but typically this is the rule. Someone was asking like, is there a better way to remember how to organize them all together? And I made one for you guys. T-A-S-M-L-P-O-A-V. So here we have subject, object, and verb, but this adds in time. This adds in adjectives, marker, subject marker, topic marker, anything like that. Location, this is the post position. So inside, outside, next to, the object, the adverb, how you're doing something, and then the verb. You probably wouldn't use all of these, but let's take a simple sentence. So how do we organize the sentence? Yesterday I saw a pretty monkey. We have the time, yesterday. I, we have a subject. Pretty monkey, we have an adjective and a noun. And we have saw, so verb, saw. This time might come after the subject. This is just kind of a general guide. I think it's ridiculously long, and I honestly never used this. So oje, yesterday I, so we have I, so now we have the subject. Remember it comes before the subject or after the subject. Oje, jonen, saw is the verb, so it's gonna come at the very end. So I'm just gonna put it down here, pasoyo. A, Korean doesn't have articles, so we don't need to even translate A, unless you wanted to say one, but we don't need to say that. So pretty monkey, monkey's an object. So we're gonna be marking with an object marker. There. So let's just first translate monkey. Wonsungi. Oze tonen wonsungi der pasar. I saw a monkey yesterday. Pretty is an adjective. Adjective comes before a subject, or in this case, a subject could also be a noun. So we would say yepun. Oze tonen yepun wonsungi der pasar. Yesterday I saw a pretty monkey. All right, see you guys later. Kurum tame toba. Okay, kiket. Can you turn this off for me? That's the, it's the button on, on the side. Yeah, that one. No, no, not that one. The right one. The right one.